Let somebody shout hallelujah. You are convinced within you that the devil is in trouble. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name, we bow down before heaven and earth adore you, angels before you, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, heaven and earth adore angels bow before you. What a mighty God. Father, you are the Almighty. And we are grateful that you've gathered us together in your presence again today. Father, we appreciate you, faithful God, mighty God. Thank you for your hand upon our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. You have sustained us even in this pandemic time. And Lord, you gathered us together again this morning to bless us. We thank you because there is no barrier to what you can do. Father, we thank you because we know you will reach to each and every one of us in our various homes in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we want to hear your word. We know you've blessed us since we started this service. We want you to send your word to us even now and break every yoke of wickedness in the name of our Lord Jesus and lift up every burden in the name of Jesus and save yourselves heal the sick, deliver the oppressed in the name of Jesus Father we want to finish this service rejoicing, Father let it be so in the name of Jesus thank you our Father blessed be thy holy name in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray let somebody shout hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. You may please have your seat. I want to trust God today that we're going to be hearing from the Lord because He has something that He wants to tell us. I want to believe God today that we are living here with testimonies in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know whether you are ready. I am because God. Has proposed to do great things here today, and I'm believing God that that which He said He will do, He will do in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Our text, this uh, our topic this morning is obedience. Obedience, a critical key to total recovery. Obedience, a critical key for total recovery. That is, if you are the one that want to recover all that the enemy has taken away from you. Then I say congratulations because this morning the Lord is going to deliver into your hands a critical key that the enemy cannot challenge in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So our text is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. The Bible says, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Brethren, 
The Lord Jesus Christ says, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. He says, if any man will open for me, I will go into him and sup with him. Now, he himself is the door. So that tells you that he can remove any door. But he was not going to force himself, he's not going to force himself into the life of any man. So there is that element of willingness, you wanting it. If you don't want it, it's not going to force it on you. And after you have shown willingness, now it's going to give you a, a few instructions. If you are able to follow them, then you will be the good of the land. You remember the story quite well in 1 Samuel chapter 30. When David and his men returned to Ziglag, they discovered that they've been looted. So God was not going to force them to call him. They were weeping, they were crying, they were fighting each other, you know, they were about to tear David apart. God was not going to force David to call him. Until David said, call me the priest. Call me the priest, bring the Urim. And then he consulted God and God spoke. So there is willingness. And after God has spoken, it was now the duty of David to do what God has said or not to do. He did what God said and you know the result. If we didn't do what God said, of course, there will be no result. Brethren, this morning, I want to believe God that God is about to do great things and he wants your own obedience. And as you obey the Lord, he will do great things for you in Jesus' mighty name. There is abundance everywhere for a child of God, even in the time of scarcity. I'm sure you already know how our patriarch Isaac sowed in the time of drought. And the Bible said he, re he reaped, you know, plentifully. So God has proved, th proved this before through the pages of the Bible. We have several examples. In John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10, John 2, 1 to 10, we see the story in Cana of Galilee, where there was nothing. You know, the wine had finished at that wedding. And you know, wine was meant for merriment. And it was over. The, the, the party just began and wine had finished. Are you there? In the beginning of your life, problems just keep falling upon each other on you. And you are thinking, would my life start before it ends? This was the story in that place. But Jesus was there. Jesus is here today. And Jesus told them what to do. What he told them to do, I mean, it didn't sound reasonable to them, but they did it because his mother told them, whatever he asked you to do, do it. So I'm also telling you today, whatever the Lord will ask you to do after this service, just go ahead and do it. And you will have testimony in Jesus' mighty name. So Jesus Christ told them, get water. John chapter 2, 1 to 10, they got water into the pot and he told them, go serve it. You know, they didn't argue. They should have argued. I say it's under water. We don't even know this man. We only know the mom. What are you saying? But the mother has, had already told them, whatever he asked you to do, do it. So they served the water, and the master of ceremony said, I've never seen a wine this tasty. Brethren, if you will obey the Lord, men will share testimony concerning your life in Jesus' mighty name. In Matthew chapter 14, from verse 15 to 21, Matthew 14, 15 to 21, we see another story there where Jesus Christ wanted to feed the crowd. And there was nothing. But there was the meal of one little boy. And Jesus blessed that meal. From that nothing, there was abundance. And the Bible said, 5,000 men, aside women and children, they fed from that blessing of the little supply. And there were 12 baskets remaining. Are you there this morning? We are thinking there is nothing. Oh, nobody's employing anybody. There are no new adverts. Everywhere you go, the offices are closed. Yes, in the midst of that nothing, when you obey what the Lord will want you to do, when you do what the Lord wants you to do, and you obey his word, you will return with testimony in Jesus' mighty name. You remember in Numbers chapter 20 from verse 10 to 13, Numbers 22, 10 to 13, you saw God bringing water out of the rock. You know, it's a rock. It's not water fountain, it's a rock. But when God is involved, even the rock drinks water. Brethren, this hard time can be soft for you alone. While others see hardness, you can see something very soft. While others see difficulty, you can see something very easy. Because God, when he is involved in a matter, 
the matter is solved. And I'm praying for you today that every issue of your life will be resolved at this altar today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, Exodus, Exodus chapter 16, verse 4, we see the story there when the people of God said they wanted bread. Bread came. We didn't see the oven. We didn't see the baker. We didn't see the flour. We didn't see the wheat. We didn't see all the other things they had into bread. But bread came. Oh, no wonder I say you might not see the rain. You might not see the cloud. But the ditches shall be filled. Every gap in your life shall be filled today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say that we rain bread. Water had rained in the time of, of, of Noah. You know, but in the time of Moses, bread came down. This is what God can do. And this is what God has done before. And faithfully, you see, because the Bible says He's the same yesterday and today and forever. Is there anything He has done before? You rest assured that He can do it again. And He will do it again in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, if you say you are obedient already, but there will be one or two people that are saying, I've been obeying God. I've not seen that recovery. I've not seen that restoration. Oh, I've seen a little, but it's not total. And I've been obeying God. How have you been obeying God? What are the characteristics of obedience? How do you know if you're obeying God? In 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 8, 4 Samuel chapter 21, verse 8, David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. Okay, this is a different story. But in that place, David was trying to say, whenever the king sends you on errand, you don't delay. So if you are obeying God, it has to be swift. So that's the first thing you need to know. Anyone who says, I obey God, must obey God swiftly, quickly, immediately. Not as he wants, but as God wants. So if you are obeying God, if you are the one that obeys God, you don't delay, you don't drag. You don't say, yeah, I will go, but I will go later. You know the story of those two sons. The one said, I will not go. But later he went. The other one said, I will go, and he didn't go. Now go back to the first one that said, I will not go. And later he went. You know, what kind of obedience is that? Who wants to have that kind of a child? A child that looks to you face to face and says, I will not go. And then later he will go. You know, God wants swiftness when you are obeying him. When you say the Lord is the one you are obeying, then you have to do it quickly. You know, that story I've just paraphrased is in Matthew 21, 28 to 32. Matthew 21, 28 to 32, where a man has two sons. Matthew 21, from verse 28 to 32, when a man has two sons, and he said, I will not go. And later, he went. But then this morning, I'm also encouraging you. As there are things that God has asked you to do, don't delay. Do it quickly. Do it fast. And the Lord will help you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I say again, do it quickly, do it fast, and the Lord will help you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 19, 2 Kings 13, 19, we see another characteristic of obedience. Obedience is total. Obedience is total. I don't know whether our brethren are following us on Facebook, or if you are, uh, the word of God is coming right away. The second thing we are looking at in the characteristics of obedience is that obedience is total. Second Kings chapter 13, verse 19. The Bible says, And the man of God was wrought with him and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then thou, then as thou smitten Syria, till thou hast consumed it. Whereas thou hast thou, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. In this case, the man of God just told the king, strike the ground. You know, and instead of the king to keep striking the ground, he just struck three times and he stopped. Is there anything God has asked you to do? You've done the first time, you've done the second time, you've done the third time. There are even individuals who say, If I go to the church today and God does not solve my problem, I will stop serving him. Oh God, if you stop serving God, you are the one that has something to lose. God has got nothing to lose. If you have done it one time, two times, three times, as God instructed you, and you have not seen the kind of result that you want, don't give up yet, because you are the next to be blessed. You are what? You are the next to be blessed. So don't, don't give up yet. Don't say, oh, because, you know, I have not seen results, I'm going to stop. Don't stop. Keep doing it. Keep following it. Because if your obedience is total, it's complete, 
You know, he's the one measuring it, not me, not you. When your obedience is complete, he is going to do for you that which you desire in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. And that takes us to that, we are still talking about total obedience, the second point. You know, if your obedience is in all things, it will be evident. If it is in a few things, it will be evident. We have those who go to church, but they go late. We have those who go to church, they go early, but they don't go with their Bible. We have those who go to church, they go early, they go with their Bible, but they don't know, they ask them what did the preacher say, they can't remember because their heart is not there. And I'm just using one single case, going to church as an example. What about your giving? Some give their tithe, but they think God does not know mathematics. Because when they give tithe, in the real sense, it is not tithe. They just drop something in the envelope. Who are you deceiving? He says, let your obedience be total. Let it be in all things. So, one, your obedience must be swift, no delay. Two, your obedience must be total. Thirdly, the obedience must come before your service. Obedience must come before service. Why people may see your service, God wants to see your obedience. Why people may see you serving God, people may see you running up and down. God wants to see you obeying His word. So the obedience must come before your service. Your service is wonderful. God wants it. But first, He wants your obedience. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 24. 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 24. The Bible says, and Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. I will stop at that because of time. To obey is better than sacrifice. To obey God is better than your service. I don't know in which area you are serving God, but to obey God is better than your service. So God wants your obedience to come before service. It is preferred to service. And then the, that's number three. The fourth thing you need to know is that obedience is sacrificial. Obedience is sacrificial. The Bible says, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. He departed as the Lord has spoken to him. Now, that might look simple, but he was uprooted. He was taken away from his root, from his kinsmen, from his people, from the only place he knew. So it's not as simple as you may be thinking. But he was ready to sacrifice. Brethren, obedience that does not take sacrifice from you, how is it an obedience? It's easy to do. It's normal, expected for the housemaid to say good morning, ma, to the madam of the home. It is only a news in our own part of the world where the madam of the home look at the maid and say, well, good morning, ma, to you too. And if she really meant it, she's not joking. Then the maid will be shocked. Because she thinks, oh, I'm the maid. Why is she saying ma to me? Brethren, when God asks for obedience from you, when he gives an instruction, be rest assured that you will be sacrificing something. When God asks you to do something, be rest assured that there will be something to sacrifice. If you are not ready to sacrifice your personality, you might not be able to obey God. You know? There are instances that God tells you what to do and you look at yourself and say, me? <laughs> How can I do that? When you are able to sacrifice your personality, sacrifice your time, sacrifice your resources, then you are ready to obey God. But I don't forget, we are talking about what are the characteristics of the obedience that the Lord is asking of you. The fifth one is very close to the fourth one, which is the fact that it's costly. It's sacrificial, and it's costly. It will cost you something. It might cost you time. It might cost you your career. There are individuals who have planned their career like our Father and the Lord. 
His plan is to become the youngest vice chancellor of, in Africa, of any, of any African university. The youngest vice chancellor. That was his aim, and he was working towards it. Then suddenly God met him and stopped him and gave him a glorious assignment. And he was willing and ready and he obeyed God. And we are all the fruit of his obedience today. See what God has done all over the world with the deep statute of God in, in nearly every nation of the world. That's what God can do when a man obeys God. It cost him his personal career, but God has glorified himself in his life and in his ministry. Brethren, so if your obedience does not cost you anything, check properly. Maybe it's just a normal thing for you to do. Maybe you are not obeying God specially. Brethren, number six, obedience is evidential. You don't need to explain that you are obeying God. We we know. Romans chapter 16, verse 19. Romans 16, verse 19 says, For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. You know, every man knows that you are obeying God. That's why some people are considered fanatical. They say, ah, your own Christianity is too much. You are probably obeying God. They say, you mean you cannot do this as well? What is the problem? with This is only 2% uh, alcohol wine. Say, no, 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 no. I will not touch wine. Ah, yeah, your own is too much. You are too fanatical. And so on and so forth. Here in this Romans 16, 19, Apostle Paul told the Roman, he said, your obedience you know, has been has come abroad unto me and unto all men. People have heard about your obedience. May men see your obedience in God in Jesus' mighty name, and may they, because of you, come to the God that you serve in the name of Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 15, we see the seventh one. John chapter 14, verse 15. Here we see it says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. So obedience is love. Obedience is love. You know that when you trust who, you, who is leading you, you don't query them. Just follow. Because you love them. Obedience is love. When you love God, you obey Him. One way to prove that you love God is to obey God. So now check. What level of obedience are you exhibiting? We have seen the characteristics of obedience. Brethren, we are talking about restoration, total recovery through obedience. You so say obedience as a critical key. So the second thing you're going to be looking apart from the characteristics is that restoration comes through obedience. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8 to 9, 1 Samuel 30, 8 to 9, the Bible says, And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt shall surely overtake them and without fear recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him. You know, so God told him what to do and he did it. He had lost so much. His two wives, his belongings, his properties. But they left nothing behind. They packed everything. So everything was gone. Yeah, completely gone. But when he asked God, and God told him what to do, they just returned from a journey of three days, so they should be tired. But when God said, start pursuing now, you know, they started going. For adventure, you look at yourself and you say, I am tired. But that is the time that God wants you to arise and do something. You have no choice but to do it. You have no choice. But to go do what the Lord wants you to want you to do. So, what has God asked you to do? How convenient is it for you? I know you want restoration. Has God inspired you to go through this fasting? And it's difficult for you to do. Has God inspired you to be a blessing to somebody around you who is in need? And you are looking at yourself and saying, even this little that I have is not enough. How can I give somebody from it? But then you won't do what you want to do. You will do what God asks you to do. If you do what God asks you to do, you will be surprised that all the things you are looking for, naturally, they will just be coming. As God inspired you, is he telling you, go stand in front of that uh, uh, city center, and whoever is coming in, just give them a card and, he, and tell them about, you know, by your faith. 
Is that what God has asked you to do? If that is what God has asked you to do, there must be something in it for you. Because where you are standing there, someone else might meet you and say, hey, how are you? You seem to be a familiar face. What are you doing here? And then you start talking and it becomes the key to that your restoration. Brethren, key may be very small. Even key may be very small, but door is bigger than every key. Door is bigger than the key. I mean, I tell you, the room is bigger than the door. So the small key is taking you to a big room. You are standing in front of a door that seems big. Or when you open the door, you are entering the bigger room. So if you, you obey simply, simple obedience, it will take you to that door. And when you open that door, you will enter into your rest. And you will express restoration and total recovery in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 5 to 7, Luke 5, 5 to 7, the Bible says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will lay down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Beloved of God, may I tell you something? They had already failed. And they knew there was no fish around. The creator just created those fish for them. He knew what he would do when he told him, drop your net. Let your net go down. Release your net to the same water. And Peter said, there's nothing here, but I will obey you. I've got nothing to lose by obeying God. Whether you lose nothing when you obey God. But you lose everything when you disobey him. The Bible says they caught sufficient fish. Let's go to verse, verse 7. Verse 6 says, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. 7 says, And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ship, ships, so that they began to sink. Brethren, do you understand that? It started with nothing. Nothing means most likely problem was waiting at home. No food, no money, you know, nothing. But by simple obedience, simple obedience, lay down your net. He has washed his net. That would have been an excuse. I have washed my net. I don't want to get I don't want to get it dirty again. You know, some people don't get themselves dirty because on Thanksgiving day, they think if I, if I, if I, if I dance too much, I'm going to sweat. Uh, I don't want to get myself smelly. I don't want to get myself dirty. I'm going to see a friend after service. I, I don't want to look dirty. <laughs> he had washed his net. I've seen them wash net before. Where it took almost half day. I've seen them. For those who have been to Fudera Waterside, you see them washing their net, arranging it. it. It's a hard job. But he said, well, if I need to rewash it, if I obey you, I will do it. What are you ready to do to receive your restoration? What are you ready to do to receive your total recovery? Will you do it at the instructions of the law? Say at your word. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3, The widow woman came to the man of God. The widow came to the man of God. And after talking to the man of God, the man of God said, Go, borrow deep vessels abroad of all thy neighbor, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, that's verse 4, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels which thou shalt set aside, which is full. And set aside that which is full. What did he ask her to do? Go and borrow vessels. When you bring the vessels, take them inside. Lock your door. And I was wondering, why did she need to lock her door? Ah, because there will be people who think she was crazy. Brethren, what God has told you, you don't need to tell the whole world before you go do it. Just go do what God has asked you to do. Lock your door. Some cannot lock the door of their mouth. As God is telling them, they are telling the whole world. And so they discover that it's not working. Yeah, something is wrong with the way you handle it. You know, the man of God told her, go and borrow verses. Borrow so many. Enter your room. Lock your door. 
Make sure your child is inside. Lock your door so that nobody is asking your, your sons outside what's going on with your mother. And then they'll start telling them, no, lock your door. Even this time of, uh, you know, stay home, men find it difficult to stay home. They just must go out, even when they have no business outside. Obey instruction. When you obey instruction, you are so sure that the blessings of obedience will come your way. So this woman obeyed the man of God. She did according to how the man of God has said. And after doing it, what she was expecting came. What are you expecting from God? When you obey God, what you are expecting from God will come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Of course, we know the end of the story. She became an oil magnet. She sold and lived on it until the, you know, all her life. In 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 10 to 14, 2 Kings 5, 10 to 14, we see the story of Naaman there. He also obeyed. Of course, he had some level of reluctance. The Bible says, Elisha sent a messenger in verse 10, 2 Kings 5, 10. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away. And said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and start and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. And not Abana and Fapa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. And the servant came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if you probably had needed to do some great thing, who does thou not have done it? How oh, much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and it was clean. Let me be realistic. The servant was right. Nehemiah was expecting the man of God to tell him to do some big things. When we ask people to give their life to Jesus, and we pray with them, and we say, You are saved. The thing is, that all? Yes. It's not a big thing. He's not asking you to come do big things, just simple things, simple obedience. God is not a, he doesn't put burden on people. He's not a taskmaster. Simple things he asks of us. He knows there is 90% before he said we should bring 10% and start it. He knows. He didn't say bring 90. There's some other gods take everything the people have, including their clothes. It's, it's considerate. Say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Brethren, may I tell you this morning that if only you will listen to God and obey Him and stop struggling with your personality, forget about the whole me, He made you. If you obey Him and follow what He says, you will express your recovery completely. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, what about the 10 lepers in Luke chapter 17 from verse 11 to 14? Luke 17, 11 to 14. The Bible says, Jesus met them and came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered verse 12 into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers which stood afar off, they were correct, they did not come here, you know, they had to stand afar off. In verse 13, from there, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, look at the mercy in verse 14. The mercy is this. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. You will not go if it was him. You will say, I'm a leper. How can I go to the priest? They want to kill me. A leper cannot go to a priest. But by the time Jesus was talking, he knew that there were no more lepers. I would say, when I came to pass that as they went, not as he spoke, as they obeyed, how many things has God said concerning your life? They never are going to come to pass until you move. Did you get that? God has said so many things about you, but they're not going to come to pass until you move. I'm saying it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Do you want to be cleansed? Do you want recovery? Do you want restoration? 
do what the Lord's divine intervention, then definitely you need to do what God has asked you to do. I don't know what he asked you to do. You probably do. What has God asked you to do? What has God asked you to do? Go do it. Whatever he has asked you to do, do it. He told them, go. Bible says, as they went, no, they just started the journey. Immediately, you know, they were cleansed. Are you going? If you are going, then you will be clean. A man that is standing by the bank of the river, when God asks him to jump into the river, he shouldn't be screaming, I don't want to drown. Nobody drown at the bank. Enter the water. If you can't see his hand, then he is not the one that sent you. If he says you should go into the water, he will not withdraw his hand. He will go with you. Because he has said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the fire, it will not kill you. Brethren, what is the conclusion of this matter? The question is, are you willing to obey him? No, no, no. It's not about, do you want restoration? It's about, are you willing to obey him? Because if you are willing and obedient, you will experience recovery. There's still good in this land. So much good. Even in this time, so many people have become millionaires. The medium we are using was not as popular as until now. You know? Everybody knew Zoom was there, but who was using it? That's why I said the vision is for an appointed time. Oh, God is asking me to do this. Go do it. If he has asked you to go and order umbrella in the time of, you know, summer, I mean, most likely something is about to happen. He will not ask you to do something without a reason. It might not look reasonable to you, but if you are willing to obey him, you will receive all that is yours. Brethren, the first willingness and the first obedience is for you to give your life to Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, there is no way you can experience recovery. Talk less of total recovery. So the first thing for you is for you to give your life to Jesus. You need to surrender your life unto Jesus. It says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He has the rest in his hand. Rest is the four letter word that starts restoration. Come receive the rest that God can give and restoration will follow automatically. Because the package that is called salvation is a full package. You will only enjoy it for as much as you understand this God. Brethren, I'm challenging you this morning. Give your life to Jesus and let's see what he will do with it. You see how your life can be without Jesus. Can we now let's see how it will be when you give it to Jesus? I can assure you that you will testify. He transforms lives. He polishes lives and makes you to shine. May you experience his glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Decide to forsake your ways and follow the ways of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Isaiah 1 18, it doesn't matter how terrible your sin may be. Come now, let us reason together and say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Doesn't matter how terrible your, your sin may have been. Come. You will accept you the way you are. Don't clean yourself before you come. Just come the way you are. And you will see him accept you and transform your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The other thing you need to do is to go search the word. In the word of God, God has said something concerning your life. You need to search it out. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Not only in your hand. Not only in your phone. Not only under your pillow. Out of your mouth. Speak it. Speak it to situations. Don't look at situations and say, ah, this is the thing that will kill me. No, no, no. You can't find it in the word of God. That problem will kill you. Check the word of God. What has the word said? When you speak the word of God into situations, they move. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. 
So you want to have total recovery. The word of God is the key. You need the word of God. You need to study the word of God. You need to meditate on the word of God. And brethren, if number 14, I've said you should be born again. That's number one. Decide to forsake your sin and come to God and live with God. Not just one with one leg in, one leg out. You can't be the one that sing in church and sing in the club. You have to choose one. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And I trust that you will choose God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know why you need to, to choose God? When Moses said, those who are on the God side, let them be on my side. And those who are not on the Lord side were on the other side with Korah, Data, and Abiram. When the ground opened, it swallowed those ones and left the people of God. That's the reason why you need to be on the, God, on the side of God. You can't be here and there. You don't serve God and mammon. You will love one and hate the other. And I don't think you want to hate God. But the Lord give you understanding in Jesus' mighty name. So, you must be born again. You must try to forsake your sin. You must study and meditate the word of God. And number four, you must fellowship with the brethren. You must do what? Fellowship with the brethren. Brethren, may I tell you something? If you don't fellowship, then you are not part of it. You must be a fellow in that ship with us. We must be together in one ship. That's the fellowship. So we must serve the same God, the same way, come together. I know this season we cannot gather together in one room. But you can see that technology has brought us together. Be part of it. Tell someone who is not part of this. And if you are here by accident, stay. And look for someone else who need to hear what God is saying. Tell them. Come join the fellowship. And when this season is over, we are able to go back to our places of worship. Be there to worship God. Don't go the day you like. Go every time that there is service. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. He says in Hebrews 10 25, not for Hebrews 10 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the man now of some. Who are those some? Children of disobedience. But exhorting one another and so much the more. As you see the day approaching. And finally, I will say, give. Give to God. Give to God. Don't be among them that says, no need. Why should I give my little money? <laughs> give to God. Not because God needs it, but because that is the seed that God will bless to increase you. Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Luke 6, 38, give, and it shall be given unto you. Remember, we are talking about total recovery. You need to obey. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. And shake it together. And run it over. Shall men give into your bosom. Now listen to this critical one. For with the same measure that ye met with her, it shall be, shall be measured to you again. The same way you give is the same way you receive. You give with joy, you receive with joy. You give little, you receive little. You give grudgingly, you receive grudgingly. And you understand what I'm talking about. You give casually, you receive casually. You give with the whole of your heart. The whole of your heart will feel it when the Lord gives you back. As God spoke to someone today, what the Lord has told you and I this morning is that we will express total recovery, but He, the Lord, is demanding of you and I our obedience. And like I said earlier, which obedience is more than giving your life to Jesus Christ? You have not given your life to Jesus. This is the opportunity for you to surrender your life. Why don't you just bow down your head and talk to God and say, Father, have mercy upon me. I'm ready to surrender my life today. Forgive me my sins. Show me your mercy. Can you go ahead and just tell the Lord, Father, have mercy upon me. And if you know you have given your life to Jesus, can you begin to ask for recovery? The Lord, I will obey you. I just need recovery. I will obey you. So for you that is praying, prayer of salvation, keep talking to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Show me your mercy. Your word has said, it doesn't matter how dirty I am. Isaiah 1 18, that you will cleanse and purify me. I come this morning. Forgive me my sins. Have you spilled blood? Can you ask the Lord to have mercy upon you? Father, have mercy upon me. If He asks mercy upon you, He will give you justification. He will forgive you. Just ask Him this morning. Have mercy upon me. Wash me with your blood. 
Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. If your prayer is the prayer of salvation, just say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. I know I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. I need your help. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me, cleanse me, spirit, soul, and body. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Father, I lift up this one unto you. You know them. They've come to you this morning asking you for mercy and for forgiveness. Father, show your mercy upon these ones in the name of Jesus. Forgive them whatever sin they might have committed. Write their names in the book of life. Keep them till the end to serve you even until your return. Lord, I pray that the enemy will not take them away from you, but they will grow to become preachers of the word of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving them. In Jesus' name we pray. The rest of us, I want us to just pray this prayer point and say, Father, I know it might be difficult now, but I am ready to obey you. As I obey you, Lord, let me express recovery. Like Peter. He said that your word. Oh, Peter obeyed your word. And he experienced complete recovery. All the fishes that were not available, suddenly they became available. And it became a blessing to his neighbor. This is what I want, Lord. I have struggled enough. I will obey you. I will follow your word. Lord, I will follow your word. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Lord, help me. I want to experience recovery. I want to experience restoration. Father, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Father, help me. I want to experience recovery. I want to experience restoration. Lord, help me to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we pray. For adventure as well, you are the one, you know, you read the Bible, but you don't understand. And yet, Joshua 1, it says, uh, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. And then you have been struggling with the word of God. You are going to ask the Lord today that he will give you that spirit of understanding. That as you study the word, you will understand. And you will be able to retain the word. Can you pray in the name of Jesus? That Father, give me the grace. Because until you discover what God is saying about your matter, you might not be able to have a solution. I say, Lord, I want to give me that sound mind, spirit of understanding, knowledge, so that when I study the word, I will understand. And I will retain the word of God. Ask him for that grace. It is possible. Everything is possible with him. If you ask him, he will do it for you. Ask the Lord. Say, Father, I want to retain the word of God. I want to understand the word of God. As I study the word of God, I want to know what you are saying. I want to ask the Lord to help you. Father, help me, help me. That even as I study the word, I will have understanding. As I study the word, I will know what you are saying in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Finally, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. The Bible said, those ten lepers, as they went, they were cleansed. Just going, when they were still lepers, Going to, to the priest is like going to a wrong place. That instruction was you no know, somehow, but they had the faith and they kept going. Can you ask the Lord this morning, Father, increase my faith in your word. Increase my faith. That's the last prayer this morning. Ask the Lord to increase your faith. Father, increase my faith. Increase my faith that I will not argue with the word of God. That when I receive the word, I will just do it. Simply do it. Lord, give me that faith. Give me that faith. And you gave those 10 lepers. People have said so much about the nine lepers that didn't return to give thanksgiving, forgetting about the faith of all the ten of them. Lord, I want that faith, the faith that makes me to do, even according to your word, even when I don't have the details, I receive that grace today. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tana Rock of Ages, we want to thank you this morning. We appreciate you for sending your word to us. Oh, Lord, we thank you because again, you have made us to know that you are interested in our recovery. And you have told us the simple thing that we need to do, which is to obey you. Lord Jesus, many of us have lost many things. We want them back. 
We only need to know what you want us to do. And so, Lord God, we are ready to obey you. Lord, I ask this morning that you give us revelations of what you want us to do in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up your children unto your hands and I decree that in your name, this was Lord God. They will understand as they study your word in the name of Jesus, Amen. as they skim through the pages of the Bible. Father, I decree that Lord God, you give them revelation in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus from this moment, when you pick up the Bible, the Lord will speak to you. Amen. And as the Lord speaks to you, the Lord will give you the grace to do that which you have discovered in the word in the name of Amen. Jesus. That spirit of disobedience that might, that, that might be ruling the life of anyone, I decree in the name of Jesus, pack your load now and live in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that in the name of Jesus, the faith like most are seen, that will make you do the word of God and see results. The Lord releases upon you today in the name of Amen. Jesus. The Bible says, faith coming by hearing, and hearing the word of God. As you partake of every service, I pray that the Lord will speak his word to you particularly and directly, in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you this thank morning. You, thank you for the souls you have saved. Thank you, thank you, Lord God, for everyone you have encouraged. Yes, Cover every single thing you've done in our lives today with the blood of, blood Jesus. of Jesus. Blessed be thy name, O Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you. Just have your seat briefly. People of God, I want to thank God for what God has done. I want to appreciate him in your life because I know he has done great things. Uh, I believe in God that your testimony will come in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Uh, if for any reason you want to get across to us, uh, my number is 050 798 3504. 050 798 3504. That's it on the screen. You can reach us through WhatsApp and you can make a call. Uh, again, this evening, exactly. By 12 midnight, we will be starting our 10 days of glory. Today is day one, and you don't want to miss it. Please come and be part of what God wants to do. It's a 10 days of move of the, of the power of God in our lives. The Lord wants to do some great things. He want to glorify us. I want you to come. I want you to be part of it. Today is the first night, and it's going to be like that for 10 nights. And I'm believing God that you will testify in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't forget, Wednesdays are divine encounter. Every Wednesdays are divine encounter. It's an online midnight prayer from 12 midnight. Every Wednesday. And you can be sure that since this Wednesday is also in that 10 day of glory, it's going to be a double dose of anointing for you. So I'm expecting that you'll be part of this and you'll broadcast this. Please share this on your uh, social media, your Facebook. Twitter, your Instagram, all your social media. Please share this and the Lord will bless you as you make yourself uh, an evangelical tool in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that God has done great thing for us today, so it's time for us to share the grace uh, as we bless the name of the Lord one more time. He has done great things. He has done great things. The Lord has done great things. He has done great things. The Lord has done great things. He has done great things. Blessing. My Lord has done great things. He Done great thing, my Lord has done great thing. He has done great thing, my Lord has done great thing. He has done great thing. Father, we are grateful for the great things that you've done. We appreciate you for bringing us together. Thank you for the salvation of souls that you granted today. And thank you for speaking your word to us. Thank you for blessing us from the beginning of this service till this time. Thank you for the Sunday school session. Thank you for the praise and worship. Thank you for the prayers. 
Thank you for every segment of this service. Father, we are grateful in Jesus' name. Lord, commit your children to your hands. As they go, please go with them. The Lord will go with you. I said the Lord will go with you. He will keep you from every evil. The Lord will keep you from COVID-19. He will keep you from every loss. In the name of Jesus. And we shall be a week of favor for you. In the name of Jesus. Everything you lay your hands on shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. In this same season, you will express a lifting up. You will express promotion. The Lord will overturn everything that the enemy has done. And make everything to work in your favor in the name of Jesus. People you have never met will favor you. Amen. Wherever you turn, you see the hand of God. Amen. The eye of the Lord will be upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. it is well with you. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Blessed be thy holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. God bless you. As we come your way again, remain. Faithfully serving the Lord and the Lord will increase in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.